Hi, folks. We'll go ahead and get started. Nice to see you all. Why don't we start and uh, just spend a little time um, exploring our experience, which is really what, what this time together is all about, is um, yeah, investigating what's here, this inexplicable, miraculous thing we call life, which we have so many names for and ways of seemingly characterizing and describing, but um, and we, of course, imagine that our descriptions are somehow capturing what's here. And so much of our kind of ordinary human existence, if you will, um, so much of it seems to be driven by this idea that we have, in fact, um, sort of encapsulated what's going on here via language and, and concepts. And um, that, that turns out to not really be the case, which is opens up a whole nother world, really, that's not in any way bound or limited or definable. And um, that's really quite something. And it's right here. It's not another world. It's this world. It's, it's, this is, this is the world that we have your present experience. There's nowhere else to look. There's nowhere else we can look. We can only look at what is here, what is being perceived. That's where all the, um, the juices, all the action. Right in, right in what you're seeing right now whatever it is, whatever you might be calling it, whatever you might be thinking it is, just this, not some other perception, this perception. It's just this funny thing <clears throat> that we do with, uh, <clears throat> as humans and seekers, um, we look for, we look for some other moment and there is no other moment. There's just, there's just this moment. You know, it's, it's such a simple, such a simple thing. And yet somehow quite powerful to be reminded of that, that there's just, there's just this instant. But this instant is so powerful and so alive and so um, so luscious and rich and um, bottomlessly so. So let's just spend a, a few minutes exploring our experience, exploring this instant that's arising. And you, you can allow yourself to just be comfortable and your eyes open or close it doesn't really matter and you can just let your um let everything just be easy and light and relaxed and not having to guide or direct or manage or manipulate what's here at all. You can just feel the presence of, of what's here. Any aspect of it doesn't matter. In a sense, it doesn't ultimately matter what, what portion of the field of experience may be coming into uh, more focused view. 
so you don't have to direct attention, just allow anything that comes into view to come into view sort of wherever attention happens to land. And just feeling how, feeling how unstable everything is, unstable in the sense of <clears throat> moving, shifting. <clears throat> feeling the way in which experience your current perception just slips away. Everything so alive, so dynamic. Noticing how there's, there's no inside or outside to, to this field of experience. There's no um, place where the field comes to some sort of definitive end either, spatially speaking. It's edgeless, it's not, uh, it doesn't have, it has no boundary. Just notice, notice that. And, and you could pick any portion of the field, any, any seemingly discrete part of the field of experience that you might think of or imagine as a piece, a discrete piece, you know, a particular feeling or sensation or thought. And in, and in one sense, the only way we could describe it as something distinct from something else would be if it had some sort of bounded nature, some boundary around it, separating it from the rest of the field, right? Like sound, for example. Well, sound shows up as this discrete, like the sound of my voice. I hear birds outside my window. I hear my own breathing. I hear a plane going overhead. So they all appear as kind of these discrete pieces in the field. And yet, they're completely inseparably mixed with everything else. So it's very paradoxical experientially. What shows up as seemingly discrete pieces in the field um, is completely mixed with everything else. It's like a, a flavor in a bowl of soup that is taste, can be tasted as a distinct flavor of spiciness or saltiness. So it stands out and yet it's completely inseparable from the entirety of the soup. It's not, there's no boundary line around it, actually. It's one seamless field of experiencing. Despite all these seemingly discrete pieces in the field that we label as thoughts, feelings, sensations, and so on. That's very curious, but you feel the way that is so. It's not philosophy, it's our actual, it's actually how it's being encountered right now. We might imagine ourselves, the one perceiving, 
the one we imagine is perceiving all of this, experiencing all of this, what we think of as I or the self, as somehow identifiably noticeable, distinct from whatever is being perceived. So I can see some object, I can see the bookshelf across from, from me. I can have some sense of, well, I'm not the bookshelf. I'm seeing the bookshelf, I'm perceiving that. So that some, some sense from one experiential perspective of being distinct from whatever is being perceived. But just like sound, the, the, the perceiver has no edge to it. It's completely mixed together with everything that's being perceived. There's really no separation. So in the, in the deepest sense, the, the truest sense, uh, I am everything that's being perceived. There's no separation. I am the sound, I am thought, I am everything being felt, everything being seen, everything being touched everything being remembered, everything being wondered. Nothing really has autonomous existence apart from the field any more than a wave has autonomous existence from the sea out of which it has emerged no boundary We may have plenty of ideas about being bounded, separate, individuated pieces of reality. But experientially, this is really quite something. You can't find pieces, can't find parts. You can't find edges in your experience, or at least I can't. <laughs> There's just the knowing of this moment. This is a constancy. The knowing of the moment is a constant. Even if the shape that knowing is taking, the flavor of the knowing is always different. Never repeats from moment to moment. That's the, that's the dynamic nature of this, the, the diversity of this moment to moment but the knowing the knowing of the moment is 
is a kind of constancy. And the knowing, like everything else, is here effortlessly, isn't it? The feeling of this moment, the tasting of this moment, the experiencing of this moment is just here spontaneously. This is what this is what is here. <laughs> there is anything else, but the experiencing of of this. What else is there? And yet, that's just here inexplicably. This capacity for reality to perceive itself, know itself, taste itself encounter itself. But it's always encountering itself. It's never encountering some other uh, reality. It, it always just becomes a different version of itself, gives rise to another expression of itself. In that sense, it doesn't matter what is being noticed, what's being focused on. It's always reality. <laughs> it's the only place you could ever travel to in the field of experiences to reality. Which is why you don't really need to focus attention. You can just let attention be relaxed. And wherever it goes, it goes to the same place. It goes to it goes to reality. In this sense, there's no distraction. Whatever one is being quote unquote distracted by <laughs> is reality. So how, what is the distraction? There's no distraction. It's just traveling to another portion of the field of experience. There's no departing the whole because there's only the whole. There's only this seamlessness. Feel the way in which it's not really structured. It's not really, it's very sort of, um, it's an energy that's just free flowing. It's not really concretizing. It's not really coalescing in some sort of fixed way because of its dynamism. It's just on the move, on the move. Just a wild dance of, of life. So there's no possibility of entrapment or bondage or because nothing is fixed, nothing is set, nothing is concretized. Because everything is on the, there's just this flow of constant opening into the next opening, opening into the next unfolding of reality, nothing, nothing ever becoming set in stone. It's not what we think it is, is it? <laughs> it has no limitation. It has no definition. It's too vast. It's too infinite. It's too... It's always more than we think it is. always beyond comprehension.
and yet it can be it can be enjoyed despite that immensely so <laughs> it's immensely enjoyable because it's this fluid rich vitality and just exquisite the indefinable well i mean i'm going to use a word to convey it but it's ultimately not conveyable but it's just rich beyond measure it's it's even the states of mind that we think of as problematic and difficult and uncomfortable are in their in their indefinable essence in their basic primal inconceivable whatever they are which can't really be said they're just um there's a beauty there's a there's a richness you can have a moment of complete confusion and just frustration that we would label as confusion or frustration and that whatever it is that the label's been placed upon the actual presence of what's there is a whole universe of as i say it's just the shining forth of its pure illumination it's the light of of reality shining forth as that particular flavor of experience so we live in this strange kind of paradoxical um, like two worlds seemingly that aren't two worlds but the, I, I call it the coin of experience you know one side is the description that seems to be real and convey what it is and then we sort of live our lives quite a bit out of that description whether it's a description of ourselves or something that's occurring or some social event or and then there's the actuality of what's really there which is beyond the description and th they're just entirely different different in the sense of what it's like from the sense of the described and bounded and limited and then the actual sense of what's there which is unbounded and unlimited and indescribable there is just completely two different worlds and yet it's one world so we may find ourselves feeling as if we're sort of bouncing back and forth between this more person bound human centric kind of perspective i'm a person living in a world trying to navigate my world and dealing with all the challenges of it and that's completely not, there's nothing wrong with that perspective of course um, but it's just not the only perspective. I mean, when I was talking a few moments ago about a sense of, of the discrete subject or self or the I, you know, that seems as if it's somehow apart from the world. I mean, it's that just creates an entire sense of being a person in a world and all of the implications of that, including the challenging phenomena that can be happening to me, that, that I can be at the mercy of, that I can feel as if I'm the victim of, that are happening to me, right? Like the, the storms of life that are happening to me. I mean, sometimes the weather is wonderful and then the, the seemingly separate self that we are is you know we're kind of we're okay with that that's great things are going well i'm in the flow of with life and my experiences and but when things are more difficult well then we have you know a lot of what we call human suffering but um but from this other perspective you can't even find the one who's suffering as a separate autonomous creature you literally can't find from that perspective not as a philosophy again but as an actual experience you can't find the boundary of you you can't find anything but this seamless whole and that changes the whole game that changes the whole sense of there's no from that perspective there's no victims there's no victimizer there's no none of that is actual 
none of that is findable from that perspective. So that can feel strange, sort of bouncing back and forth, if you will, between those, those realities that seem so distinct um, in their feel and their implication. And, and yet they're one, it's one reality that can look like those two different perspectives and, and, and does. <laughs> But what, what can be very helpful to realize is when we find ourselves in the more sense of being a separate subject, an individual in a world that sometimes feels quite threatening and overwhelming and so on, that we don't have a long way to travel to get back to that other perspective because the actual felt sense of what's going on is entirely transcends that separative seemingly divided perspective so it's not far away it's right here <laughs> it is this this very moment is both simultaneously being defined as um, parts and pieces and simultaneously not that at all so we don't have to go anywhere to find that it's right here it's it's it is here as our very felt experience And interestingly, that the recognition of that other perspective that you could say the transcendental perspective, the, the undivided perspective, um, makes the, the divided perspective just so much easier to navigate and um, so much more fun to navigate. And because there's a, there's a deeper knowing that what might be showing up and being defined and described as a problem isn't merely a problem, even if you might still be addressing it at that described level, you know, taking care of your headache or your physical health or a conflict in a relationship or whatever it might be happening that we might be thinking of as something that wants to be solved. But knowing in the deepest depths of what's actually there that there's not, none of that is actually the whole story of what's going on. That it's, just, um, it's just a light show, literally. Um, that changes without, without in any way having to deny the other perspective. Because when you know it's fundamentally not a problem, then there's no need to deny it either. You can completely hang out in it and operate from within that, that other perspective, the divided perspective. It's not a, it's not a problem. because it's not fundamentally divided, even though it looks like it is <laughs> sometimes or oftentimes. It's probably a good stopping point to um, see if anyone had anything they'd like to share around this, what we've been exploring together. What, um, what if anything is arising for you? Like, where is this, what do you find yourself encountering, navigating, noticing? Hi, John. Hi, Kate. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, it's undivided. It can seem divided, but it's always undivided. And that's, as you say, you can kind of have that as a, you, you put it much better, but like a backstop. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about 
repetitive thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular about a story that loops, loops, mm -hmm. loops, loops, mm -hmm. with, no apparent, with no apparent end, mm -hmm. no apparent beginning, but certainly no apparent end. Um, and I noticed something you said about nothing ever becoming set in stone. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing from that is that even something that seems like the same old rigmarole going around is actually each time, if you really get curious about it, slightly different. In Brilliant. tone. Absolutely. And, yeah. That's exactly right. Well said. Yeah. So it's just a matter of not looking carefully enough. Yeah. And so, you know, in many ways, our conceptualizing the apparatus of consciousness that's conceptualizing this and rendering it conceptually with language and so on um, really rests upon uh, this kind of assumption of, of continuity, right? That things are persisting, which is what allows us to basically define them, whether we're defining it as a thought or uh, something that's, yeah, something that's enduring, a sense of being a person, a sense of other people in our life. And, and, and again, not, not to deny that vantage because we all know what that experience is like. So in a sense, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not even necessarily saying this other perspective is, is better or even truer in a way. True. It just opens up this another, like another vista on what's here. And um, I would say it feels closer to the bone. It feels more actual and less abstract because if you feel what's here, like you might be describing, like you said, like a repetitive thought, so-called. Mm. And what's, what, what's actually taking place is it's never repeating, even though it may, see how, it may seem as if it's repeating, right? Like my habit, oh, I, oh there I go again, doing the same thing, but... Uh, or even, you know, we have that sense, of course, in our day-to-day -day lives, like here I am on another Zoom call, you know, yet again. <laughs> it's like, I've been on Zoom a lot, you know, as, as many of us have this past year. And um, so that's a kind of a convenience of language to like, you know, well, this is, we have a reference point for the experience because we've encountered it before. Yeah, I know what this is. This is being on a Zoom call. But is that actually what's being experienced no what's being experienced is utterly unique and and without unless i go into memory and try to like say well how is this similar to some other time i mean now i'm in fantasy which again is it can, is useful and it's part of we could say our knowledge is based on memory our knowledge of what things are and who people are and who we are is based on memory but what's actually here is not memory what's here is actuality like what's here it's very um i'm increasingly having this sense that 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 one way you could describe this other perspective is it's kind of like an abstract painting you know it doesn't have like a fixed structure it's very it's just got this um ambiguous sort of dynamism that's just uh I mean, just, it's incredible. It's like, it's just ungraspable. I mean, just try to grasp hold of the moment and hold it in place. It won't, it won't cooperate, will it? It just goes poof <laughs> up in smoke. It's, I mean, that's, that's not philosophy. That's our actual experience right now. It's just mm -hmm. gone. This is gone, gone, gone. And yet curiously, we, because of the persistence of reality, you could say, uh, that keeps re taking new shape in the instant of its dissolving, it, it assumes an, another parent form and then dissolves. And in this kind of constant, maybe that's what the flow of time is, you know, seeming time where it's got this persistence. It just keeps shining, you know, it keeps manifesting, it keeps expressing, it keeps creating. I mean, there's no, we don't know what is really going on. I mean, that's complete speculation. Mm -hmm. What's really, what's actually happening right now. I mean, if we break it down in a materialistic kind of sense, I mean, right, it's just seriously like quantum fluctuations giving rise to subatomic uh, particles and that are eventually becoming cells and 
bodies and people and and a universe and it's like i mean we have no idea we have no idea but 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 the sense is experientially that it's not repeating that that the moment is always surprising that this has never been here before so yeah so repetitive thinking isn't actually repetitive thinking yeah and i'm just hearing you say you know this thing about defining mm -hmm. which seems to be an intensely human sort of thing to do to yeah. stick a leg it and that if i you know i can imagine really playing with this actually now having had those conversations where instead of oh here's this repetitive loop coming again you know here's that squiggle again right in this that part of that abstract painting yes let me just change the color of it let me reverse it out you know so just actually playing with that loop yeah whereas before it was defined yeah very much as a uh, this bloody thing again you know a, a, a sort of um, a problem actually well that's a really powerful way to if one is finding themselves uh challenged by thinking in, in general one kind or another and that that defines a lot of human beings experience right they find mm. themselves at times tortured by their own thought processes right mm. um it can be really powerful to rather than our habitual thing which is to orient to the content of the thinking what the thoughts seem to be suggesting in terms of their content like this is repetitive because it's yes. a thought that says the thinking is repetitive isn't it so yes. you're but the actual experience is not repetitive mm. the content yeah. is su suggesting one thing but the felt sense of what's here the texture of here you could say the quality of what's here is anything but what the content is suggesting it's the same thing as i was saying at the outset of that little guided inquiry is you know the content of um the content might be telling us a certain thing is a problem but when we feel the presence of it we can discover that the, the presence of what's here transcends the, the any notions of being problem a problem that's an idea a problem is a, an idea I mean, from a human, again, the human centric perspective is quite powerful and we're all very accustomed to it. It's really mostly what we know. Mm. But like, you know, if the sun were to explode, that's not a problem. <laughs> but from a human centric perspective, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen be the end of life on Earth. But it's just what I mean, if you look at this, you know, in a in a cosmic kind of sense, that's what's going on all the time is stars exploding is it a problem it's just what life is doing mm. so you know it's like it's very interesting you know it's like uh, you know when you take the middle person out you know you're having experience and it's like it's just experience it's like rather than constantly referencing back to the one who's having the experience is like is it a problem well it's just experience Yes. And again, you know, there, there's no, I have no, there's nothing in me that wants to sort of eradicate the other perspective somehow, the, the personal perspective, because it's, it is, it's an, it's one of life's modes. It's one of the ways life expresses itself as this personal perspective that thinks and wonders and defines. Mm -hmm. and so there's, but it's just not the whole story. It's just not yeah. the, and, and, yeah. and, and of course, you know, I would suggest that that what, what most human suffering um, arises out of that that um, that that perspective, the divided perspective. Because I feel like I myself, you know, navigating a bunch of poten potentially difficult objects, whether they're internal subjective experiences or external circumstances, or but it's like. Yeah, but from this other perspective, there's just one thing. And so there's not two things, there's just one thing. Mm. There's one reality, one singular ocean of existence, rather than one seemingly isolated wave trying to make sense of a bunch of <laughs> chaotic at times waves and unpredictable waves of experience and circumstance and some that are can overwhelm me and destroy me and that that perspective is um can be a very overwhelming one as we all know
We all know that. We all know that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and uh, well, from the perspective of, to stay with the water metaphor, my favorite, you know, it's like from the perspective of the sea itself, um, where there's no problem. It is about perspective, isn't it? It's Shifting. completely about perspective. It's completely about perspective. So just going back to something you said earlier on in the reply, um, mm -hmm. this thing about the difference between the content and the felt, I think you said yeah. something like the felt sense of it. Right, right. Could, could you say more about, I'm sorry, I'm aware I'm taking up quite a bit of time. No, 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 your questions are wonderful. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it could be like, like a thought arises and the thought is a self-critical thought that says, you know, I'm a terrible person for having done that. That's the content, that's the story that the, the 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 thought is suggesting about who i am and what the world is and or you know um but but what's actually there is is um oh, so hard to put into words like temperature and yeah i mean you go to things like that but <clears throat> it's like uh Thought is like an apparition, you know, it's, it's a presence. It's a, it's a, it's a phenomena. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, well, I don't even know what thought is actually, but uh -huh. it's like going to the, you could say, sometimes I'll say, you know, it's like going to the energy of it rather than the content of it. It's like the, you know, it's like, um, You know, if I use something like it's easier with senses, you know, thought thoughts a little bit trickier because of because it suggests content, whereas more so, you know, it's almost all whereas a sensation like touch. I mean, there's there's content there in the sense of I could tell you, you know, if I'm putting my hand on my arm right now and feeling the sensation of touch mm -hmm. that I would describe as touch. That's the description of what's there, right? But what's actually there? <laughs> what is yeah. what is what is a sensation? Okay. So then that's what I mean by you go to the energy of it, you go to the presence of it, you go to the actuality. Well, what's actually there? Not whatever it's telling me it is, but what is it actually? So yeah. thoughts telling you that it's a thought, but thoughts aren't thought. Thoughts are mystery pure mystery what it is it's i mean what is it actually it's you could never say it's a bottomless well it's infinity it's it's i mean what is a thought actually that's what i mean by going to the presence of it rather than the content of it yes like, yeah, so yeah so come out of the well to use your analogy mm -hmm. and go to what's the well made of Exactly. Yeah. What's, the, what's the felt experience of it? What's it made than... of? It, exactly. Oh. What's, what's it made of? That's the that's the exploration. Yeah. And the mind is telling us through language and, and conceptualization what things are, seemingly telling us what they are, but it's not really telling us what they are. I mean, when yeah. I put a label on some state like fear, it's not really telling me what the building blocks of fear are actually, what its essential components are what it's yeah what it's uh it's not at all telling me that it's like you know yeah it's like um it's like a drawing of you could never tell me what you are you know it's just this caricature of what you are what you yeah. are is beyond comprehension right I mean, yeah, you're so many things. You're universes upon universes of, I mean, the particular way you perceive phenomena and mm -hmm. how you experience the sense of touch and how how you encounter all the phenomena of life. I mean, it's like I could just go on and on and on and on. I mean, I would never hope to get to the bottom of who and what Kate is, right? So any description that I might throw at Kate is just laughable, right? Mm -hmm. And and this is true of of everything. It's true of everything. It's so much more. And, and that so much more is the boundlessness of that, the infinity of that is, is so liberating because how do you, you can't be entrapped in something that has no end to it. 
what, what's the trap <laughs> yeah that's lovely so going beyond language yeah it's and seeing that reality is beyond language yeah without yeah. having to negate language but just recognizing that it it um this is one of many tools it just oversimplifies what's here you know it it it, it miss it's misleading in that sense because uh, and this is true of not just you know profound experiences that we will often say like oh my god it was just beyond words you know i have no words for that it was just so phenomenal but the most mm. basic you know so-called mundane of human experiences are utterly just equally indescribable i mean the simplest things of the you know i'm taking a drink of water mm. I mean, if what what is a flavor? What what is a flavor? You know, what what it, what makes that flavor a flavor? I mean, experientially, not not. Oh, I'm not analyzing the molecules and how they hit the taste buds in a certain way. That's all. That's interesting, but it's not what I'm talking about. So this might suggest taking like a really neutral experience as a kind of practice thing. Yeah. I have, I sometimes hard. say, like, especially to my grad students who I teach this stuff to sometimes that who are who are less steeped in it, maybe than many of you or, you know, they're, they're coming to it a little bit more oftentimes naively in the sense of less experience. Um, I often sometimes catch myself because I'll, you know, people tend to come to things like this, like they want to solve their problems, you know, because if something feels out of place, so they'll often go to the most difficult things that they're and then they want to investigate those, which is fine. I mean, it, anything can be explored in this these ways, but it can be, you know, you could take something more neutral, like the experience of breathing and investigate what that is, because it's it's there's no charge there, right? Whereas if you go straight to what the self is, there's a little bit more kind of, you know, investment in that particular phenomena. <laughs> it's less neutral. <laughs> And so it can be more difficult. Or if you go to something that's very challenging, very painful in your life, let's say that, again, that might be more difficult um, initially to, to explore it in this kind of just open way, just this curious way. Um, yeah. But it depends. It's very individual. Some people might feel, you know, make a lot of headway, if you will, or, or, or by, by going to where it's really difficult and, and exploring, you know, a deep sense of heartbreak or something and, and well, what's that made of you know yeah. um so it's very individual i find yeah well, it's been really helpful thank you and yeah of course uh, kate yeah for your um the book that you recently published and it's really lovely so thank you the, for the book the, the the one that's the there's the downloadable one uh no or, or, oh this extraordinary moment yes oh cool Good. I'm glad you glad you found your way to that and enjoyed yeah, it. No, yeah. No, Wonderful. Thanks for your time. Thanks, time. Kate. It's great to meet you. And you. Uh, just a comment. Hey Ed. Uh, you you hi. Uh, you use the metaphor of a coin as you know, one side is the conventional view mm -hmm. and the other side is your view or or, or or i would say just whatever it is that's actually there <laughs> okay yeah so there's another way to use the coin metaphor and that is um the two sides are 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 alternate views but then there's the body of the coin that can't be described in terms of either heads or tails mm -hmm the middle of the coin you could say right right is most of the coin yeah that's yeah. overlooked because of the focus on this view or that view sure and so yeah. what you're presenting is not really a view at all right in terms of the uh, views over yeah i mean in in it I mean, this is the thing and, and why you know use of anything language or metaphor is is you know you'll run up against you know what what you you often you know will po rightly point out, which is that um, when you use language or metaphor, you know you're template you're you're using you're, you're trying to create a structure to 
to convey something about the nature of things, you know, that basically will fall, you know, just falls apart upon investigation because, you know, you can't really say whether what's here is divided or undivided because in a sense, none, it's, you know, D, none of the above, you know, or E, all of the above. Those are probably the two better responses rather than one way or the other. But I will often kind of emphasize that the way I was using that metaphor is that this other kind of transcendental perspective, indescribable perspective, just because we're, we're largely unfamiliar with it, in our, at least as far as most humans seem to be. It's not something, I mean, if I just listen to human discourse, it doesn't seem like that's making its way into human discourse for the most part in terms of our understanding of what's going on here. And so I'm, I'm pointing that out as an alternative perspective that, that shines another light on what's going on here. But ultimately, uh, you know, none of the perspectives can, they're all wrong in a sense, in, in the sense of being able to convey what's, what's going on here. I mean, it's just, um, But it's interesting how, you know, the perspectiveless nature of this, you know, dances as all these perspectives, doesn't it? I mean, it's, 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 um, it's quite something. Quite something. I mean, even in the, even, even these things that we just, take so for granted because they're so part of our daily existence seemingly of, of, of the conceiving faculty of consciousness. You know, you close your eyes and you open them and you know what all this stuff is. You know, I mean, you, consciousness, just that's a bookshelf, that's a window, that's a view, that's a glass, this is a computer, you know, and it's just instantaneously like, how is it taking all of this, these bits of this light show and rendering it as something, something comprehensible. And it's doing that just like, that's a mind blowing. Yeah. And, and we consciousness or life or whatever seems to have this capacity, which we're focusing in on obviously of of questioning that or of looking a little bit more carefully at what's actually going on here and not just taking it for granted that, oh, because I have language and I have words, that, that means I know what all of this shit is because I don't think we do. Not really. I think it's much weirder <laughs> than we imagine. <laughs> much, uh, much more, I don't know. It's um, yeah, yeah, it's quite something. Have I been on YouTube? Hi, Zoe. Hi. Uh, I'm not sure if I can uh, remember the, the felt sense I had while you were uh, uh, inviting us in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like to uh, nevertheless share uh, my really response with every cell which was an absolute liberty mm. uh, you mentioned something about hitting the bone but for me I understand that but for me it was the absence of bones it was just space space mm -hmm. space and just uh, a sense of uh, liberty mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a mel melting melting of uh, whatever I could say I don't know I, I, I would hate to 
uh, label it, but uh, mm -hmm. it would be like, uh, I don't know, just melting through tears. It's uh, um, staying with uh, with now here. Mm -hmm. Just uh, it seems like it, it just puts light on a different light on everything, and just uh, dissolves what uh, what the psyche calls a problem, <laughs> you know, <laughs> forever. So that's what I call uh, liberty. Yeah. The absence of the heavy, uh, structured, uh, you know. And and it's, what you're and what you're describing beautifully is, um, you know, what's so lovely is that. I mean, you're you're speaking about it as something you know that had occurred, of course, but but what's actually the case, which you know, is that that what you're describing is exactly what's here now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, every time I'm with now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. And and it can and it can often feel like this this is a very subtle point, but but I think an important one. Hmm. It can feel as if that the perspective that you're describing is sort of lost touch with somehow. Like maybe it goes away or suddenly things feel more structured and less free and um, less spacious, right? But this becomes very interesting because this is the power of description coming coming back in and suggesting that 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 open endedness is somehow gone. But it is never gone because it is the very nature of even all the descriptions and all the characterizations and their nature is. They're not a they're not a problem because I, I once wrote out this this like silly little um, it was like an algorithm for yeah I found it how lucky <laughs> I just opened right to it <laughs> I, I I called it the logic of this inconceivability you will never find anything other than experience right I think we can all agree on that you'll never find anything but experience. Experience by its very nature transcends all definitions and descriptions. Therefore, the only thing you can ever find is pure transcendence, pure mystery, pure indefinability. You won't ever find anything but that. Even when you think you've found something definable, just look. And there's always, I think there's always that possibility of looking and seeing what's actually there that's like and that possibility is it's always now it, it's never like in the past and it's never in the future there is there's, there's only ever this instant and this instant there's that possibility of recognizing that that, that we're exploring always and in, an, in a sense it's like this is sort of to kate's point it can feel like there's this habit <laughs> of losing touch with that indefinability and that spaciousness, like just like a repetitive thinking, right? Oh, that damn habit that I keep going off into description and definition and losing touch with this presence or something, however we say it. But it's like, that's not actually true. In a sense, there's, there's, there's only ever the, this flash, there's not, there's not repeating patterns. And that's amazing. Sorry, it looks like you, you, sorry, Zoe, you just froze up for a second there, so I, I couldn't quite make out what you were saying. I just agreed with the fact that it is absolutely amazing. You right. <laughs> yes, yeah. sometimes that's all I'm left with is it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's abs it is, it's just astonishing. It's, it's, it's where we are. And, you know, and it's always astonishing. It's never not astonishing. So a moment of total boredom, what we might describe as, oh my God, I can't believe I'm in this situation again. No, it's actually, no, it's completely fresh surprise. Never been here before, utterly astonishing and amazing, actually, always. Which is how wonderful that it is that way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Aren't <True>. we lucky? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, Zoe. You know, in a certain way, I, I keep finding myself sensing this somehow or that uh, it's all about enjoyment in a way. Like there's something, because what I find this, this exploration just feels so enjoyable. It feels like you're discovering the intrinsically joyful nature of what's here too. You know, that even, even in the difficult stuff that we would describe conventionally as difficult, there's in its more sort of basic kind of primal nature, there's something also astonishing and miraculous about that too. And that's what I was saying that, that this other perspective, it, it has all sorts of pragmatic implications for living a hum very human life, you know, and um, just recognizing You know, it's kind of like, I, I, I'm always a little slow to use this metaphor because it can be misunderstood, but, you know, when you know that the dream is made of one thing, you know, the dream in consciousness, and there's kind of lucidity in the dream, you know, the terrifying things in the dream, they may still have some flavor of terror in them and, and challenge. It's not necessarily that that just goes away, but there's this knowing of the dreamlike nature of it, that it is one of one thing. It is the dreaming consciousness. And, and from that perspective, of course, there's no, nothing threatening anything. And so that's somewhat akin to this discovery of this other perspective where you, what I, what I sometimes call the, the problem free perspective, you know, that like you said, you know, the Liberty. Mm -hmm. um, so that then when we are encountering what we could say, you know, is a human problem in our personal lives or our interpersonal lives, it's like, okay, well, I can address it at that level of the, at the level of the description, right? I can take care of my health if something happens, but then there's this like other knowing, you know, of, of well, it's, n it's not merely that, it's something else. It's, I can't say what it is, but it's like, um, I remember when, when, when day I was sitting in a coffee shop, as I used to love to do pre-pandemic and do a lot of my work and writing for hours in coffee shops. I don't know why, I just love it. And, and I remember one time sitting there and it's like, I was like, yeah, from one perspective, I'm a human sitting in a coffee shop. And then from this other perspective, it's like infinity sitting in infinity. Well, that's a really different perspective with a whole different feel to it. Mm -hmm. And there you are in a moment navigating some difficult thing that occurred and feeling the, the loss of that and the difficulty of that or the uncertainty of that and all the human, you know, the human experience. And yeah, you know, there, there I am, a person navigating old age and death, you know, the challenge of that that comes along with that, the loss that comes along with that and, and not to deny any of that. And then there's this other perspective, it's infinity navigating infinity literally i mean literally there's just this infinite energy of life that's um, appears as as all of us and every creature and everything and every event and it's all made of the whatever this is made of you know we could call it made of absolute reality made of god made of pure mystery and well that's that has a very different feel to it <laughs> especially when the shit's hitting the fan in life and you're just like wow okay and it's not an it's it's no denial of of anything either there's no yeah you know, on no, the contrary uh, excuse me on no, the no. contrary it's not a denial it opens up the space and there's more acceptance to absolutely. me absolutely that's why yeah. it the flow comes in yeah uh, yeah, even with serious sicknesses, which I went through uh, recently enough, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just you accept, I accepted the space was there and it just, you know, absorbed and 
flu. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember having this experience. That's, that's beautifully said. I, I where I, I had this very strange thing happen probably a month ago where I don't really know what happened, but as I was going to bed, something didn't feel right with my body. Like I just it was, something fell off, and I felt like maybe I was coming down with something. Felt maybe what I would describe as a little feverish. But then as I was going to bed and kind of drifting into sleep, trying to drift into sleep, I literally had this feeling like my body was on fire. I never encountered anything like it before. And I immediately went to, as many of us have been doing because of what's going on world in the world, I thought maybe this is COVID because it was so foreign to my experience. And so I could watch the whole like interpretive mechanism go into action oh, what if this is COVID? What are the implications of that? What might that mean? And then there was just the raw experience of what it was, the pure mystery of what was being encountered. And I just, like, I felt like I just entered into that like a deep sea diver, you know, like what was actually there? What was this, you know? And just, it was just infinity, like everything else. With no, but there was no, but it was not in any way, it was actually entering more into the experience rather than trying to move away from the experience, like in an avoidance kind of way. Um, but it was also cutting through all the interpretations of what it might be and just seeing, well, what is it actually in this instant? Well, I don't know what it is. It's pure mystery, just like I don't know what this moment is either, even if I might be able to describe it in some ways seemingly. So... Yeah, I mean, that's very much my sense that there's, um, there's less of an impetus to shy away from the challenges of the human experience because you recognize more and more that they're not the threats we imagine them to be. So even difficult states of mind, which we you know, typically would want to try to run from or get away from or avoid because if they're, they're uncomfortable or they maybe feel threatening to us, our integrity and so on. It's like, why? <laughs> I, I mean, there's not there's less of an impetus to, to move away from those states because they're not the threats I imagine them to be. Which doesn't preclude my taking steps to address them practically because I might do something, you know. If I have a headache, I might do something to take care of it at that level. But but it's not. But also recognizing that it's not merely a headache is very liberating to see that, and that there's not somebody encountering that headache either. <laughs> it can be found as something discrete and definable either. That's of course exceedingly liberating to feel. But there's just, you know. I mean, it's amazing. You know, it's like, are you sitting here? Are you an individual or is, is absolute reality sitting here listening to this? It's different, isn't it? It feels different. Mm -hmm. That thing of it's not the threat that it's imagined to be, mm -hmm. is that like an orientation? Mm that you can kind of go in and out of definitely that's how i experience it mm. yeah it, it can i can go in and out of um, yeah. and, and uh yeah uh which is really wild <laughs> mm. it, can feel, it can feel like popping in and out of realities yeah. perspect perspectival realities uh, yeah. um I remember one time I was walking and I was, it was in the midst of experiencing this difficult kind of relational situation. And, and I was having this experience as I was interpreting it in a certain way. And then I was noticing having this experience that felt very much the result of that interpretation. And then there was just this sense of like, like literally like turning the kaleidoscope and looking at it in this different way. And it was like suddenly this completely different experience. I was like, Holy cow. It's yeah. like, it's like literally like just a completely different experience, <laughs> depending on how I turn the kaleidoscope. And, you know, it's like I, I, can, ha I, can, 
I can feel like this perspective of like, I'm an individual talking to Kate, this individual, you know, this woman, I don't know. Sounds like maybe from the UK. I, I, are you in the UK? I am spot on, yes. Lovely. <laughs> um, it's one of the great things about uh, the technology, right? We can be together even though we're so far away, sort of. <laughs> um, it's just astounding, yeah. Yeah, it's astounding. So, so yeah, so there's that perspective, like two individuals having a conversation and how delightful, like duality is delightful. Like how, the dance of two, you know. Because yeah. this, this singular reality loves to become other than itself seemingly and play with itself. I mean, that's, it's, that's what it does, doesn't it? It's constantly seeming to split itself into pieces and then having relationships with those pieces. But then I can turn the kaleidoscope and feel how, I don't know where, whatever I think of as me ends and whatever you might be begins. There's just a seamlessness. There's just pure intimacy. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's no gap here. There's no place where there's no gap. There's no seam in the fabric of, of this moment. And that's a different perspective. And I can feel that. I can feel what that feels like in a sense or the implication of that. It just feels so open and so different. And yeah, so it is. It, it is feel. It feels like that to your to your question of like kind of popping in and out of orientations and perspectives and playing with them. Why not yeah. play with the different perspectives? And it seems to be what what life does. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Are you ever without perspective? Um. My own experience is that there's always a perspective, even if it's like unthinkably subtle as to be barely perceptible. I mean, sometimes the way the traditions talk about that is that this always shows up as something. It never shows up as nothing. Emptiness always shows up as form in the Buddhist tradition. And the form suggests a perspective, otherwise there's no form. Something is apparently there as a perspective. Subtle, there may not be lots of dense layers of interpretation on the perspective, but it's just like somehow this never shows up naked. Um, you know, like in the, what, it, what it, I guess it would be like more of the Vedanta tradition, you know, that Shiva always shows up as Shakti. You know, it's always, it's always looking like something appearing to look like something. I've, uh, I've, I've, never, I've never found anything other than that, that sort of dance of the indefinable showing up as something apparently definable. Well, what about when you're asleep? Like deep sleep. Uh, Yeah, it, it, it feels to me like um, it, it's, there's like a, just the subtlest of subtlest of subtlest, something's present there, you know, but there's very little in the way of elaboration <laughs> on that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's as if it's nothing, but, but it's something. But, you know, that can become kind of overly abstract, you know, from, from, you know to, to get into those kind of philosophical questions, interesting as they may be. But um, I guess the other way I would put it, Ed, is that somehow, in my experience at least, this always seems to have some sort of implication. Like I, I, I feel how this can't be pinned down. I can't find, in other words, I can't find this. 
as something findable. It's like a receding horizon, as I say. You know, you keep looking for what this is and you never get to the end of the horizon. It just keeps, it always eludes pin downing, <laughs> right? Defining. And yet there's some sense of what that's like, even though you can't really say it. That's what I mean by this sense of Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, it's interesting in the term Sat Chit Ananda, you know, which captures, I think, quite simply and quite beautifully, you know, it's, it's ever existent, Sat, it's ever conscious, Chit, and it's, it's joy, Ananda. That's, that's the implication to me of hi, this. John? Yeah, hi, Michael. Hi, uh, good morning. I, I overslept and I... I definitely wanted to connect with you uh, this morning, and then I, I have to I have to go. But I just wanted to to say something very briefly, mm -hmm. and I didn't mean to interrupt the flow of the conversation with the other gentleman. But what came to mind, in, 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 you know, asking, is there any like can there be no perspective? Mm -hmm. I think with the implication of of the question, mm -hmm. and what what came to mind was that Trogim Trungpa's definition. Of Mahamudra, which I'll, I'll never forget. It was very beautiful, and you know, if you break that that it's a Sanskrit term, mm -hmm. Maha, great, mm -hmm. and Mudra meaning the the gesture, mm -hmm. the, the great gesture. So, Trungpa said, everything is a perfect gesture of itself. It's not referring to anything other than itself, but it is. So mm -hmm. it, it's a, a perfect gesture of itself. Mm -hmm. That 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 resonates. That 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 whenever I reflect on that, right, that, that experience is not referring to anything other than what it is. A tree is is a perfect manifestation of treeness, and mm -hmm. with everything else. Right. So yeah, that's lovely. To, yeah, that's lovely. To, mm -hmm. Anyway, John, next week I, I'm free. Next few weeks I'll be free, so I look forward to being with you for the entire meeting thanks thanks michael good to hear your voice See you then. thanks thank you bye 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 i mean the thing about you know perspective frida i would just add one other thing at is that that it's kind of like my conversation, you know, about what thought is with, with Kate. Um, what is a perspective as an experience? <laughs> I'm going to ask that. Right? It's like, so okay. I was going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. You know, so in a sense, you, you look for what a perspective is. And again, you find the receding horizons. Like, I can't tell, I can't get, I, I don't know what a perspective is. I can experience a perspective. This is, I mean, it's such a paradox. Like you have experience and you can't find what it is definitively. You can't, you, you look, you look, you look, you look, and you think, you know, conventional thought would say, if I look hard enough, I'll get to the bottom of what it is. I'll get it to its essence. But, the, but the, you know, the definition of emptiness in the Buddhist tradition, too bad Michael's not here because he's our resident Buddhist expert. I'm not. Um, but, you know, that, that the dharmas have no self nature, I think, is, is how they talk about emptiness. It's like has no self nature means you can't get to what itself is, to what its essence is. You can't find. Like, what is the taste of chocolate? <laughs> you can't get to the bottom of what it is. You cannot locate what that flavor is. Pin it down, define it. It's, it's just like falling through this infinite well. You never, with no, you never land at the bottom going, ah, Eureka, I found what, what it is. Here it is, you know? And um, that's the curious thing about, about life is, and phenomena, both scientifically and experientially the closer you look the less you know about it <laughs> it's funny 
Yeah. I mean, in a way, you in a way you discover more about it, but you just keep discovering more and more. You don't get to fi a final conclusion of what it is. And in that sense, you know, everything is without perspective from that from that in, in the sense of a perspective that can be pinned down as being a perspective. So in that sense, there are no perspectives <laughs> findable, at least. So, you know, even science says the uncertainty is built into reality. It's not, it's, it's part of reality. It seems that way. <laughs> it seems very, uh, it just seems to be, I mean, and I, I will often highlight this because I think it's such a powerful way to, to really see why indefinability is what it, it is the case when it comes to phenomena is if, if the moment is transforming, in, in other words, the dynamism of you know, a flower is unfolding or the moment is unfolding like a flower, right? So it's opening. It's not like it, it, it opens a little bit and stops and hangs out there for a while. That isn't how life is. It's this constant opening, isn't it? So in order to define it, you have to play this game or consciousness has to play this game of holding it still long enough to be able to define it, right? There it is. I got it. <laughs> but it's just slipped away right in the next instant. So there is no define. How would you define this moment? What, do you, what would you say the shape of this moment is? Well, it's not static, so you can't say what the shape is, can you? Not unless you play a game of claiming that you have, oh, there it is. It's kind of like this, <laughs> but in the next instant, it's kind of not like that anymore. So you're defining we're always late to the party because reality has moved on the minute we've defined it, which, which tells us that it can't be defined. So from that standpoint, it's like, that, talk about uncertainty. That's the uncertainty of knowing what things are because they have become something else the minute they've taken, taken form. Which is why in some traditions, they say that things never come into form, actually. They just appear to. Because the form is always changing. It's not, it's not extraordinary. It's like, wow. Like we think of ourselves as fixed, like, like we're more or less what we were like a second ago, but we're not, are we? No. I mean, this is just such a curious thing. Like, okay, I'm Zoe. I'm seeing Zoe on the corner of my screen. So I can look at Zoe and I can say, well, Zoe's like more or less what Zoe was like an instant ago, right? That's how I seem to have some continuity of like experiencing the same person. But am I actually experiencing the same person? No. What's even more curious is the means by which we fix things is always moving. I mean, thought, you can't. Right. It's thought that <laughs> fixes things, but you can't <laughs> fix thought. Even. Exactly. So, <laughs> That's wonderful. Really a miracle. That's wonderful. I love that. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for that reminder. <laughs> Even the means that we attempt to use to fix things are not holding still. So we're totally screwed. <laughs> but in the best possible liberating way. <laughs> right, Zoe? <laughs> screwed or saved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Saved. <laughs> saved. Well, that's right. Because, you know, what are our definitions and descriptions? They, they, they tend to create the sense of, I mean, the things that humans struggle with. What do humans struggle with? Sense of lack sense of incompleteness, sense of not being whole, sense of something here that could threaten me and on and on, sense of boundedness and, and being separate and divided. And, uh, but we're saved from those things and, and investigating experience will obliterate those assumptions because experience is not limited. Experience is not bound. It is not... Um, even our vulnerability, you know, it can't be found either.
Yeah. It's uh, totally lovely to be with all of you. Thank you for, for joining with me again, uh, or for the first time if you're new. Um, and I uh, hope to see you down the road another time. I'm planning on uh, continuing the meetings for now and on Sunday mornings. So thanks again for stopping by and um, wish you all a beautiful rest of your evening, day. Take good Thank care. you. Thank Love you. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.